Chicago is emerging as a national leader in the exploding business of craft beer. The second city is second only to Portland, Oregon, in the number of craft breweries, more than 150. And according to Cranes, more commercial real estate is devoted to independent brewing here than in any other city in the country. In Chicago, watering holes like Vice District Brewing are cranking out beers to meet every taste and budget. Vice, now nearly two years old, is a microbrewery and tap room in the South Loop. Co-owners Curtis Tarver and Quentin Cole consider themselves craft beer geeks. Like many craft beer novices, the pair learned by brewing at home. We started home brewing just different recipes. Um, and enjoyed it, quite frankly. And uh, next thing you know, we're kind of hanging out at the house in our respective basements across the street. He would keep, you know, three beers on tap. I keep four beers on tap. And, you know, we just invite people to come to our basement and, and celebrate with us. Tarver and Cole made the transition from their homes to this location, where they serve more than 14 house-made beers weekly. Amanda, our head brewer, um, makes efficient use of this space, this limited space. This is where all the magic happens. There's nothing sexy about it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, this is the unsexy part about beer. So we try to keep about five to six staple beers, right? So we start with a Blondell, which is one of our lighter beers, to the other end, a double IPA, right? Which is gonna be a much hoppier beer, right? A lot of aroma. I mean, it's gonna kind of punch you in the face, quite frankly, when you get near it. But it's a really solid beer. What we try to do is to keep beers for people who may not be into the craft beer space, and then some for people who are in the space, both feet, you know, they've jumped in and they want to taste the most flavorful thing they can. It can be very difficult to know what separates one beer from another in terms of style. The easiest way to think about it is to divide them into their two overarching categories, lagers and ales. Lagers in general tend to be lighter and cleaner in flavor uh, and mouthfeel. Pilsners are a great example of a lager style. Uh, ales in general tend to be heavier uh, in flavor, and a lot of times, especially here in the States, will be darker in color. Quarters, stouts, and India pale ales are great examples of this category. Bruce White runs the Chicago Beer Experience. Three times a week, he gives group tours to those interested in learning about craft beer. We explore a lot of Chicago history, and we kind of have a beer tie in there as well. And then, of course, we taste and learn about craft beer during that time. Welcome to Buddy Guys. This place is awesome. Chicago has had a rich beer history even back in the 1800s. We had 54 breweries in the city. 53 of them were run by Germans. Chicago was definitely a big brewing city back in those days. Before the craft beer movement between 1978 and 1988, no breweries existed in the city, uh, which third largest city in the country. That's pretty ridiculous. Thanks to trend-setting local breweries, including Goose Island, Half Acre and Revolution, Chicago's craft beer scene is exploding and helped push national sales past $22 billion in 2015. These days in craft beer, there's a lot of, you know, one and two year old breweries that have opened up that are doing new things and they're bringing new beers and new flavors and tastes to the table, which is important. Josh Death is managing partner at Revolution Brewing in Logan Square the largest independent brewery in Illinois. When Revolution opened six years ago, it was brewing about 2,000 barrels of beer. Last year, Revolution brewed more than 60,000 barrels. We definitely had high double-digit growth for a while in our sales. Right now we sell 90% of our beer here in the Chicagoland area. But we're starting to sell in other states around the country. Beer sales in Chicago last year were $545 million. Of that $545 million in 2015, craft beer sales account for a large percentage. Major beer companies began noticing the high sales craft brewers were pulling in, took note of the possibilities, and in some cases bought up the smaller competitors. Anheuser-Busch, the nation's biggest brewer, bought Chicago's Goose Island Brewery for $8.8 .8 million. Heineken bought a 50% stake in Lagunitas Brewing Company, which has a large brewery in Chicago. I think the big brewers like Anheuser-Busch, you know, they, they, they definitely see craft beer as a threat, whereas they used to be able to ignore it, think it was like a little fly and they would just flick it away 10 years ago. 
and now they've decided that they can't make it themselves, so they're going to go ahead and buy it and join them that way. Buying bread from a man in Brazil, where he was six foot four and full of muscle. The business of craft beer has now become a thriving culture. Craft beer festivals, races, and even yoga classes are popping up around the city. Josh Siegel runs the Chicago Ale Fest. Chicago Ale Fest is a two-day American craft beer festival that takes place at Buckingham Fountain. It's one of the larger craft beer festivals in the city. We'll bring in over 100 different brewers, 220 different beers, live music, local food all in one place. I made sure to come here this year, you know? Just to have a chance to taste the various beers and experience it. And it's also part of being in Chicago. Chicago is really embracing the craft brewing and the craft beer industry. So I just wanted to be a part of that. Craft beer festivals are all about the experience. And don't get me wrong, you, you have to have great craft beer at a craft beer festival. But really it comes down to the experience. And that experience is one Josh Death does not see tapping out anytime soon. It's not a bubble that's going to burst. It's not like people are suddenly going to start switching back to drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon after they've been drinking craft beer IPAs. It's like once you get that flavor on your taste buds, it's hard to go back.